In this tutorial, you're going to learn about the new UEN lesson plan tool and how to use it to create some really nice professional looking lessons. So here I am at my.uen.org and this is a service that is strictly for Utah teachers. And when you get to my.uen.org, first of all, don't forget the dots. So like I said, my.uen.org. When you get there, if you don't already have an account, you should click create account to get started. Although many teachers in Utah already have an account, some of you may have forgotten your login and password, but uh, most people that are teaching in Utah already have one of these accounts. If you did forget your login, you can see right here, there's a link where you can go through some steps to recover your password. Once you have your account, you'll just sign in, you'll log in, and it will probably take you either to your public page or to your personal page. For some people, instead of taking you to the public or personal page, it takes you to a screen where it will ask you what you prefer to be your homepage. Do you want it to be your public page or do you want it to be your personal page? I chose a while ago to make my public page my homepage, so whenever I sign in, it takes me directly here. But that's a decision that you can make if you want to. So anyway, you wanna get eventually to your personal page. I'm not on my personal page, so how do I get there? Because I'm on my public page, if I want to switch to the personal page, I would go here to the upper right corner, click personal page, and that takes me to my personal page. Okay, here on the personal page, I have a bunch of different tools that are just for me. My students can't see these and they can't really access them, at least not the teacher versions of these tools. So I have changed what this looks like. I've reordered some of the portlets by clicking and dragging them. So yours may not look exactly like this, but you're looking for this particular portlet that's called services slash tools. And here in the UEN tools portion of that, notice that there is a lesson plan creation tool. So I'm gonna click on that and it opens up the new UEN lesson plan tool. I can sign in with my same login and password that I used in my MyUEN account. And once I do that, it takes me in to the lesson plan tool. You can see I have a list of lesson plans that I've created and used in the past. Quite a good list there. Uh, but I wanna create a brand new lesson plan. So I click create, it opens up a window, and then I simply click to provide a title for my lesson plan. And I'm going to call this Spanish Family Vocabulary. I click OK, and now I've got a title. Next, I go down and click on Summary and I can type a summary of this lesson plan that I'm about to create. Notice that there are some prompts here. So provide a brief overview of your lesson, limit yourself to three to four sentences. Now, in this new version of the UEN lesson plan tool, you have access to some really nice tools and some better tools. So in the past, when we used the old lesson plan tool, for one thing, it would not allow for separate paragraphs, at least by default, or anything like that. And so whatever you typed, when you clicked away from it and then went back, it was simply all put in as one paragraph. Well, that is changed, that is fixed with this new UEN lesson plan tool. So you can easily hit enter and type to create your lesson plan, and it's wonderful. It's such a big improvement over the old UEN lesson plan tool. So you see that it preserves the paragraph layout. Uh, if you hit enter or return a couple times to provide some blank space, it respects that. It lets you enter those blank spaces into your summary. Also notice that we have some nice tools across the top, including an undo button, which is really nice. You can just hit undo a few times, you can redo. We also have bold, underline, italicize, and we have some centering tools, all sorts of wonderful tools that the old lesson plan tool just didn't have. And you would have to type in HTML code to do these kinds of things. We can also do bulleted lists, numbered lists. You can decrease the indent, increase the indent. So some really nice options. You can also easily turn text into a hyperlink. So I can highlight text, click here on insert link, and then I can put in the URL for the link along with a title. If you want, you can set this link to open in a new window. Anyway, you just click OK when you're done. Click OK again in this case, and you have a link. 
Notice up at the top, there are a couple of menu options. You can insert tables now into your lesson plan areas or sections. And now that I've got those tables, I can type from within those tables. Okay, so that's kind of nice. You can also insert source code or embed codes into your lesson plans. Now this can be a little tricky, but basically if you wanna try this, you can just get embed codes, paste them into the source code area, click OK, and that content should be loaded in. Let's try an example of that. I'm gonna to go to Quizlet and I'm gonna search for Spanish family vocabulary and it found some Spanish family vocabulary and then I'm gonna go here to these dots and look there's an embed button it gives me an embed code so if I highlight that and copy it or in this case I can just click copy HTML I wonder if I could put those flashcards right into the summary of my lesson plan now that might not make sense to put it in the summary but if I wanted to could I do it to help me with this, I'm gonna put a bunch of Z's into this portlet, and then I'll click Tools, Source Code, and look, there are the Z's, and then I'm gonna highlight the Z's and paste over them the code that I got from Quizlet. I click OK, and take a look at that. Inside this portlet in my lesson plan tool, there is the Quizlet game that will help my students to practice the vocabulary that they're gonna need. Now, like I said, it may not make sense to have this activity in the summary. Maybe that should go somewhere else, but I wanted you to see that that is a possibility. All right, I decided to remove that and to put in some actual text here that's a summary of the lesson plan. Now, along the way, it's important that you do save your work. Here in the upper left, there's a save button, and that's just an ongoing save. It saves the work that you've done thus far, and it is a good idea to click that from time to time. Next, we have core ties, and this is an opportunity for us to tie the lesson plan to the core curriculum. So I can go down here and I can choose, in this case, world language. There it is. And then I can choose the objective, the standard that matches what I'm trying to do in this lesson plan. Other types of information that you can add to your lesson plan include time frame, how many class periods, how many minutes, the group size, life skills that will be addressed, a bibliography if you would like, and you can add attachments or website links, and then authors. If you want, you can add an author to co-teach this lesson. So I just did a search, there's one of my colleagues, and I could add him to the list of authors and we could co-edit this lesson plan. Okay, so I am done now with the general portion of this lesson plan. Now keep in mind, you don't always have to fill in all of these. In my own classes, I like to specify which sections you would have to fill out. So don't feel like you have to do all of this, but if you choose to, it really does add to your lesson plan and it provides a more rich lesson plan. I'm gonna click Save. And now I wanna click preview, just so you can get a sense of what this is looking like so far. Doesn't that look nice and professional? There's my lesson plan so far. I'm gonna close out of that tab and get back to my lesson plan. The work I've done so far is just in the general section of my lesson plan, but there's also an instructional section and an assessment section. And in my opinion, the instructional section really is the heart of the lesson plan. Here, you can put a list of materials, like I've already done, things to have for the lesson, and I've put in just a numbered list of the things that are required. In addition to describing those things, you could make attachments. So you could click Choose File. Let's say you have a worksheet or a handout that you would like to upload. You select it, you click Open, and it's uploaded into this window, but you do need to click the Add button to make that official. So now that document is part of this lesson plan. I'm gonna delete that. You could also type a description of what that file is. And then another way to add materials is to click Websites, put in a website name and the link to the website. So let's say it's this website, I can just copy that and I can paste it into the site URL along with a name. And if I want a description, I can put that there too. Click Add, and that is a material that's provided to the students. Next up, what background does the teacher need? You could just type this in or provide attachments or websites. 
student prior knowledge. What would the students need to know before learning this lesson? And what are some intended learning outcomes? You could describe that. And again, there are prompts to help you through each of these steps. Next, instructional procedures. And for me, this is the exact heart of the lesson plan. This is basically, if I were to be a fly on the wall in your classroom, what would I see happening? So maybe number one, welcome the students and do self-starter activity. And maybe I provide details about that activity. And then step two, students get into groups of five. Okay, so you get the idea. This is laying out step by step what the procedures are for the lesson. Again, like I showed earlier, you have access to the table option. If you want to put tables in, you can add cells, rows, and columns. You can use source code to put in an embed code, and we have all of those other tools that I showed earlier. When you're done, good idea to click Save. And again, we could use attachments and websites. I'm going to go next to strategies for diverse learners. Very similar. What strategies would you recommend for diverse learners? And then extensions. Okay, ways to extend the learning of the students. Let's look at assessment. The assessment area of your lesson plan is where you describe how you will assess the students. So you might say, I will do informal assessment by whatnot, and then formal assessment will include. So you can put that information here. If you want, you can attach a quiz, an assignment to this, whatever you want to do, or you could have links as well to an assessment. Now, next we have rubrics. And what this is, this taps into a different UEN tool called the UEN rubrics tool. And that's also been updated recently. These are some rubrics that I've used in the past. I could just click the plus sign. But if I want to create a new rubric, I would need to go to the rubrics tool which I can do here, create a rubric. It launches when I click that button, and then I could create a UEN rubric to associate with this lesson plan. I will show you how to use the rubric tool in another video tutorial that I'll make next. But for now, suffice it to say that you would just make that rubric, you would associate it with your lesson plan, and then click Save and Preview, and at that point, you're done with your lesson plan. Okay, so here is my finished lesson plan. Of course, it's not really finished, but uh, pretend that I filled in all of the required areas and sections of my lesson plan. This is it. So now how would I share this with another teacher or maybe with parents or students? Or in the case of my classes, how would you share this with me so that I can see your lesson plan? And this is one of the most commonly made mistakes in my classes and other classes where we require lesson plans, people will share the wrong link with us, basically. They'll share their editing link, which is this. But that doesn't really give us access to your lesson plan. So when it comes time to share with me your lesson plan, it's very important that you click Save and then that you click the Preview button. That takes you to your lesson plan and this is the URL, this is the link that I need to be able to see your lesson plan. So you could copy that, you could paste it into Canvas and send it to me, you could even email it to me, uh, just open up your email and paste in that link. If I have this link here to your actual lesson plan, not your editing version of the lesson plan, but the real public lesson plan, I can see your work, I can see your lesson. If you want a shortcut, Let's say you want to email this to me, but you want a shortcut. You don't want to have to copy it and paste it and open up your email program, paste it in there. There is a button here at the far right that says share. And if you just put your mouse on it, you don't click. Just put your mouse on it. It pops up with some options for sharing. And the top one is email. So you could just put in my email address, which I'm sure you know is rob at uen.org. Say who it's from. In other words, your email address. And then a subject and a note, type up a note, you click I'm not a robot, you click send, and that lesson plan will be sent to me. If you're watching this video as part of a Canvas course, you really shouldn't share it with me that way. Just go up here, copy the URL, paste it into Canvas, and submit it. So thanks for watching. I hope that helps you understand how to use the new lesson plan tool from UEN. And if you have any questions, let me know.